in this module, I want to talk a little bit about the marketing that you guys will do if you decide to choose this niche as a uh, business model, whether it's your primary business model or secondary business model. And I hope we would all understand that you have to have a marketing plan to succeed. And you have to have a marketing plan for each niche or area that you want to work in. Little side note, little sidebar here. Uh, one of the things I think I see most new agents do is they just try and take on everything. And in the long run, that ends up defeating their purpose. Oh, I'll sell that. Oh, I'll list that. Oh, I'll help you buy that. And I get why they do that when they first start because all they're thinking is, I've got to pay a house payment and I've got kids that need braces and I've got to generate income. But you understand that if you are dealing with first-time home buyers, you market differently than if you're dealing with secondary home buyers like this. If you're dealing with golf course properties, you market different than if you're selling lakefront properties. There are plenty of brokerages around where I'm from that specialize in lake properties. That's all they do. I know a young lady out of Chicago. That's all she does is golf course properties. So make sure you understand that if you're targeting this market, there is a specific methodology that you need to use and you should create a marketing plan. So one of the things that you need to understand, as we have touched on several times, is this market is comprised largely of two types of people, right? Older people that are retired and affluent buyers. So typically those two in connection with each other, I would say in general are older and have a higher net worth. So when you're trying to connect with these individuals, that you need to identify the right medium of choice with that. And you should concentrate 75% of your marketing on digital marketing. Now, I know what you're thinking because I just saw somebody shake their head and mouth it, but old people don't understand marketing. I mean, uh, the internet. That's not true, all right? I will tell you that people that are of that nature that are looking for properties are going to be using the internet. Very few people in Minnesota are going to drive to Florida to drive neighborhoods and look at signs. They're going to look at it on what's your favorite word out there? What, what uh, that Z word? Yeah, they're going to look at it there or realtor.com or perhaps your own website, which is how you should be using this through an IDX system, but that's a whole nother conversation. So you need to understand that digital is going to be your most powerful tool when dealing with these people because of the distance in which most of them are looking to buy. You know, they're in the Midwest, that Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and they want to buy in uh, Arizona or North Carolina or Florida. They are going to be looking on the Internet. So therefore, your most powerful tool is going to be your website. You want to make sure that you provide a very good looking website and all the digital pictures and content and things of just not pictures. Uh, I don't even know how to, what I'm saying is you might want to give information about the city. What's the population? What's the shopping like? You know, what are average utility rates? Things of these questions, things of these nature that these buyers are going to want to know so that one, you become the expert in that area and they're going to call you and go, hey, we were looking on your website. We want to buy down in Miami. Uh, we got a question about, you know, utility rates in Miami or trash pickup or, you know, something of that nature that they don't have access to that you do because you have a very strong digital presence when looking for this type of buyer. The second media that you ought to be thinking about, and that's probably about 20 to 25 percent of your uh, budget, would be editorial type of advertisement. These are lifestyle magazines, travel publications, things where people would be looking. Once again, I go back to the 
uh, young lady in Chicago that only deals in golf course homes. She used to play NCAA women's golf for a, a big college. So she knows a lot of the golf courses, knows a lot of the owners, and she does all of her marketing, guess where? In Golf Magazine, because that's who wants to live on a golf course, are golfers, and golfers read Golf Magazine. So editorial content or editorial advertising is probably beneficial to you so that if there's a Florida magazine, that would be good for a location editorial. People that would be looking through a Florida magazine that have uh, gotten it and they're in Minnesota and they've got this Florida magazine and you've got an ad in there that they can see that ad. You also could be looking in affluent uh, magazines. Once again, golf magazine. Typically, the average golfer is of, of higher income. Uh, I knew a gentleman that advertised in, believe it or not, the Harley Davidson magazine and fur companies. Now, I, I know that's not politically correct right now. A lot of people are having trouble with that. Um, this was 10, 15 years ago because his belief that people that bought fur coats and Harleys had uh, extra income and he used to advertise that he was bought and sold rental properties. Did a lot of business out of that. So that is an editorial type of content, either by location or um, by social group, like, like I said, Golfers Magazine, maybe a Boating World Magazine, people that live in Florida may be looking for boats. So there's boat magazines, that kind of stuff. And then you want to also try a little extra stuff that's called experimental. Maybe things in like classical music radio, uh, classical music events, wine tasting events. These are other areas that are not necessarily mainstream, but they typically deal with that affluent buyer or that uh, older person that is enjoying the golden years, so to speak. Now, we mentioned a little earlier that there is actually a certification that you guys can earn. It's the resort, it's actually the CSPS, it's called the Certified Resort and Second Home Property Specialist, and it is a Realtor certification given by the NAR. It's a recognized official NAR certification that allows you as an agent to work with buyers and sellers and have the confidence of understanding how to deal with buying, selling, managing investment, retirement homes, second homes, recreational homes, all of these items. So if this is a niche that you're looking at, this is probably something you might want to think about. And you can go to that if you just go to uh, uh, Realtor, not, I almost said Realtor.com. If you go to the uh, NAR's homepage and uh, put in there CSPS, you can find everything you need to do and you can earn that certification. All right.